So we already talked about this thing called a Coulomb force. It's nothing other than the electrostatic forces. And for point charges, we can simply say this fairly simple rule of KQ1, Q2 over R square. Uh, we can work out the direction based on repulsion and attraction. So typically we just use uh, magnitudes to figure this out first and work out the direction. And I'm going to show you how to do that with this 1D example when you have multiple forces involved. There's also a part B to this question, but it was kind of weird, so I just cut it out. But confusingly enough, we're wanting to deal with the case for figure B, so let's not care about this part. Let that go away. All right. We have a particular charge located at x equals 4 centimeters. So let's draw that in. So somehow we have a charge here of Q equals 2 nanocoulombs. And as a result of this charge being there, it's feeling an electrostatic force from each of the other charges. So let's name them just to keep ourselves straight here. So there's charge A, charge B, charge C, charge D. And each of these charges will give a particular electrostatic force on my two Coulomb charge that I'm interested in because they have their own charge. So that's QA. And they have their own kind of radius and distance apart, that's RA. Let's tabulate all these so we can collect all the information. At the same time, it's also useful to figure out the direction as well. So let's make a chart. We have A, B, C, D. We can note down the charge, in this case in microcoulombs. So minus 2Q, so that's minus 2 times 1 microcoulombs. B has positive 1, positive 3. And then this one way out here has negative one microcoulombs, micro being 10 to the minus six. So then in terms of direction, we look at them on a two by two basis. Each of the A, B, C, D will work independently of the other. So let's see, we have minus two for charge A and positive two for charge Q. Opposite attract, so that's attract. And if it's attracting, and again, we're looking at the charge on my two nanocoulomb. It's attracting, it's gonna to go towards the negative. So it's gonna go that way. For charge B, positive for B and positive. So it's gonna repel. And so on the little green charge here, it's gonna be repelled again to the left because it has to go away from charge B. Important to note here, don't just base your direction or positive or negative sign based on charge because it also depends on the actual geometrical location of your charges. And once we get to 2D, all the arrows go in every which way. So it's important to actually draw these things out. Then again, charge C, it's also repelling. And since my two nanocoulomb charge sits on the left of charge C, repelling means going further to the left. And last but not least, charge D being a negative charge will attract, even though somewhat weakly because it's so far away. And to attract the green charge will get pulled towards it to the right. So that we have our direction set up. So when then we can think about because positive X goes that way, then we can think about if the force is going to be positive or negative, etc, etc. Each one of these have a different R. And we'll put that in, eh, let's change it into meters so we don't have to deal with the conversion later. The distance between charge A and my specific charge here, it's one, two, three centimeters. So that's 0 0.03. To charge B, we have a distance of 0 0.01. Then C, one, two, three, four, 0 0.04. And then for charge D is way out here at 14. I'm at four, so that's 0 0.1. Zero meters. Then the calculation is really just plugging numbers in. The, for each of them, I have to find out the magnitude first. And that's k q q over r square. And in the case of A, we're going to use charge A and RA. 
The constant is still the same. 10 to the 9. Got a little tight on space here, so I'm going to drop the unit because I know it will work out based on the constant. Uh, charge A is, we just take the magnitude, 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And Q is 2 times 10 to the negative 9, all divided by 0 0.03 meters, all square. So as long as we use meters and coulombs, and the constant as we're given, we're gonna get newtons in the end. 0.0399467. And we can do the same calculation for all the other ones. So without taking up too much more real estate, we can just list them out. Charge B should have the largest effect because it is the closest. Then charge C will be somewhat smaller because it's further away even though it is bigger and then this one at the end way gone and it's not very big so a whole order of magnitude smaller actually then we add them up except be careful here we have to add them up like vectors so we have force A going that way and force B going that way and force C going that way and force D come, come back to this side. So when we add up the forces, we have to keep in mind the direction of the forces. So since it's defined, positive x is to the right, so we have minus 0 0.0399467, etc. minus, minus again, and then finally we have a plus, oops, Newtons, we have a plus of, force D, when we work it all out, we'll get negative 0 0.2516 Newtons, which then we can say that much force to the left. So just like all forces, you have to respect the direction because force is a vector. And so typically what we do is based on the position of the charges and the size of the charges, we can work out the direction first, separately from the magnitude. The magnitude we will use uh, our kqq over r square. You'll find that very handy as we move forward. Anytime we deal with point charges, but we deal with the direction separately, doing all the magnitude, and then we sum them all up like vectors. This will extend to 2D as well, and I'll show you that in a few videos down the road.